Assalamu alaikum dear students and welcome to the 21st session of the KIPS Distance Learning Program Current Affairs Newspaper Roundup Session. I am your host Shahrukh Khaider and the topic for today is going to be we are going to review what the coronavirus is, how it appeared, what it does, how it spread to the world, what were the kind of reactions from uh, you know, worldwide and what kind of impact did this virus have on our lives individually and collectively. So first of all, what is the coronavirus and where did it come from? So the coronavirus belongs to the zoonotic family of viruses, which is a family of viruses that has the ability to jump from one species to another, which means that uh, in the most cases, it is possible that this virus came from animals and jumped onto human beings. Now, there are a lot of theories. Uh, in fact, there are a lot of uh, conspiracy theories as to what are the origins of this virus and whether this was an orchestrated plan in order to damage some adversary by a great power or not. In any case, a uh, zoonotic family of viruses has proven to be the most dangerous kind of viruses to human beings in the past as well. Such viruses as the HIV virus that causes AIDS are also zoonotic family of viruses and other forms of viruses that have proven to be fatal in the past were also transferred onto humans from animals after when we started to domesticate different kinds of animals for our food production and for other of our layers and basically when the human beings started to exploit nature and do irreversible damage. And that is something that environmental experts and health experts around the world have also warned against that if we do not stop our unfettered destruction and exploitation of nature, we should get ready to face even more dangerous and damning pandemics into the future. Anyhow, the conspiracy surrounding the Wuhan virus, as was termed by Donald Trump, which was quite a racist attack, so to speak, and he also termed the virus as the Chinese virus, uh, the conspiracy theories are as follows. Some people believe that the virus uh, was actually manufactured by one of the powers in order to disrupt the economy of the rising China, which was uh, posing a threat and a very potent threat to the economic and political and military hegemony of United States around the world. Secondly, some people believe that one of the main reasons why it uh, was, you know, proliferated around the world this virus is so that the increasing population of the humans can be contained and the increasing burden upon the natural resources of the earth can be contained. There's another conspiracy theory which says that the virus is not natural and it was manufactured and it is used being used as a biological weapon to undermine the economies of Asia and Europe in order to bring them down and to uh, allow other great powers of the world to assume the status of global hegemon. Anyhow, the fact of the matter is that ma majority of these are basically American and Chinese accusations against each other. So the blame game basically initiated and started with Donald Trump's speech. He said that the Wuhan virus has basically been created in one of the biological labs that was uh, doing research on different families and kinds of viruses in Wuhan, which was propagated in China and then it was transferred to overseas to be spread all around the world. And uh, America says, Donald Trump in particular says, that the Chinese government authorities were aware of the potential that this virus had and they let it spread uh, knowingly. Whereas the Chinese accused the Americans and a handful of troops that had come from America, American troops, to China for different military uh, games had brought the virus in one of their boots and spread it to China to damage China economically and politically and to push it towards a public health crisis. But we really don't know whether all of these claims and accusations are true or not. To date, there are no confirmed reports of where did the virus come from. In most probabilities, most healthcare officials agree that it came from one of the wet markets of China, which is a market which deals in wildlife and animal trade and where exotic animals are sold and bought and, and often kept in very unhygienic, very um, shanty and closed cages, which can be the breeding ground from su for such viruses. And this theory also says that the virus jumped from bats onto pangolins and then from pangolins onto humans when they were consumed by human beings. Anyhow, how has this virus spread around the world and what kind of 
uh, changes has it brought. So basically the virus spreads through human contact, through the exchange of fluids between humans and that is more specifically through human breath. So when someone breathes or someone talks or someone sneezes or coughs and if they are uh, a carrier or a potential infectant of the virus, they will transfer the virus to anyone within a two or three meter radius of themselves. And uh, the rate at which the virus is spreading is substantial, it's exponential, it cannot be stopped. So one individual who has been, uh, who has contracted the Wuhan virus, uh, no, sorry, we shouldn't call it that because that is propaganda, the coronavirus can uh, spread the virus to at least 50 to 60 people within a few days. And if that one person is present in a large gathering, the number of infections within one to two hours can reach hundreds. And this pace at which the virus is spreading is the most damning thing about this virus because there is no way of controlling it because it has um, targeted one of the most important human characteristics, which is social contact, because after all, human beings are social animals. So. The virus, the coronavirus, uh, and the family of viruses that it belongs to, the coronaviruses, are basically, um, you know, respiratory viruses, and they attack the human respiratory system. The coronavirus, the COVID-19 uh, virus, basically attacks human lungs, and in severe causes, it cause, uh, cases, it causes pneumonia, and that pneumonia can even uh, prove to be fatal if the patient is not able to breathe in enough oxygen because of substantial damage to lungs and uh, uh, you know freezing up of mucus all around the nasal and lung uh, you know cavities right now uh, the current numbers are out and the death rate by the virus initially thought to be 2% has jumped to 7.1% globally whereas this uh, death rate varies substantially from one region to another and from one age group into another. In Pakistan, this death rate is quite low, it is 2.2%, whereas in Italy, it is as high as more than 10 and it is in double figures. In the United States, it is also quite high. The total number of infections in the world right now stands at 4.3 million and the total deaths reported up till now are roughly 300,000. So, after the virus emerged in the um, you know, city of Wuhan in the Hubei province of China, it spread like wildfire and within a few weeks they had nearly 70 to 80,000 cases and that is when the Chinese uh, Communist Party imposed one of the um, strictest uh, uh, lockdowns uh, in human history where the entire uh, 8 million population of the Wuhan city was com completely shut indoors to prevent the spread of the virus, but it still spread substantially and caused the loss of nearly 3,500 lives. After that, uh, it spread first to Iran, where Chinese people were working and they were traversing from China to Iran and in between. And secondly, then it spread to Italy with alarming speeds. One of the main reasons why it spread to Italy is because the Chinese workers that were working in Italy um, on different projects and different countries went back to China for to celebrate the Chinese New Year's. And when they came back to Italy, they brought the virus with them. And then it spread like wildfire fire in uh, Italy as well with many thousands of cases reported on a daily basis at the height of the virus it was causing nearly 3000 deaths a day and Italy was so badly hurt that the prime minister and the president came out in public and said that there's nothing that they could do they were actually seen crying um, in front of the public and on the media then on from Italy because the European Union is a very uh, internally integrated interdependent and open border policy region the virus spread all around Europe from France to Spain to Germany to Poland and all the Scandinavian countries as well and uh, throughout this time period in three to four weeks they also started to have thousands of cases on a daily basis and thousands of deaths the United Kingdom was the second worst hit country and then after Italy and Europe it spread the United States where it had the highest number of cases now reported at nearly 1.5 million and out of which nearly 80,000 people have died in the United States alone. After the United States the next epicenter of the virus has become Russia where they've already had 
nearly 300,000 cases and uh, tens of thousands of deaths. However, there are a few regions on, uh, on the world map that have experienced quite less spread of the virus and substantially less uh, fatalities. For example, Africa, only the entire continent uh, with nearly one-fourth of the world population has only a few thousand cases and so is true in uh, Latin America as well. The number of cases has not exploded and so is true in South Asia and parts of the Southeast Asia as well. Now most experts think that the primary reason for that reasons for that are twofold. Number one, the climate in these regions is much much more warmer, which prevents the rapid spread of the virus. The virus is uh, stopped in its tracks and cannot spread at the speed that it has spread in colder temperatures. And secondly, uh, majority of these countries, since they are developing countries. There are other diseases, for example, the hepatitis disease and the malaria diseases, which are not primarily present in the Western world, which has been worst hit by the coronavirus. So in these countries, in order to prevent these viruses, these earlier diseases to spread, many people have been vaccinated against them. And somehow those vaccines have been effective in countering the COVID-19 uh, virus to some extent as well, which is why people in these regions have generally higher um, defenses, internal defenses, and more robust, um, you know, their own defenses, which can help them prevent uh, worst cases of the virus. <clears throat> so at the height of the crisis, uh, there was a swooping lockdown all around the world, and one third of humanity was under lockdown, which has never happened in recent history, and it was quite dramatic. It dramatically shaped human lives. It had very damning impacts on, re on national, regional, and global economies. The economies all around the world came to a grinding halt and manufacturing was completely uh, abandoned. And in many parts of the world, for example, the automotive factory produced zero number of units or cars. And at the height of the crisis, nearly 2 million jobs were being lost on a daily basis. And it is estimated that nearly 30 to 40 million jobs have been lost globally, which is uh, a height of unemployment that has not been seen ever since the 1930s Great Depression. And perhaps in some cases, this Great Depression that we are going to experience due to the COVID-19 crisis might just be even more damning than the most damning economic crisis that we've seen in our history, which is the 1930 Great Depression. Uh, IMF and the World Bank have predicted that there is going to be a negative 2% growth in the global economy, whereas some countries are going to experience even much higher levels of negative growth and reduction in their economic output. For example, the North American and European economies are set to uh, shed by some estimates at least 4 to 5% of their GDPs, which is a substantial drop especially considering that the world was already recovering from the 2008 financial crisis and there was hope in the markets and in people's economic lives around the world that things would turn for the better, but they did not. The virus came in and the world was effectively put into a lockdown and quarantine. Now, we have tried to do everything to stop this virus, but it has not uh, yielded to our pressure. And now that countries are once again opening up, the primary reason for that is not that we have contained the spread of the virus, but that we cannot no longer bear the economic pain of the lockdown and the quarantine, which is why countries around the world are now risking opening economies so that we can provide livelihood to people. And there is a general move towards herd immunity concept. Herd immunity is when enough a number of people in a country, for example, 70% of the population, uh, you know, are contract the virus and then they recover from it, uh, leaving behind many uh, fatalities. And since majority of the population is now immune to the virus because it has recovered and developed an immune response, rest of the population is, uh, you know, safe from the virus because it simply does not spread from one person to another. So this is how it is. This is where the coronavirus stands now. I am unequivocally against lifting lockdown, but the governments are doing it anyhow. And I can sympathize with the government's idea of providing relief to the daily wage earners, especially in the developing world and to businesses in the developed world. With that, thank you very much for your time and attention. Take care. Allah Hafiz.